When it comes to talent, Africa has had some. In fact, the African and South American talent on the ball is natural. In Africa, it is said that we don't teach kids how to play football. The talent in Africa is so profound that even a football match played between friends or among social clubs can be mistaken for a professional match. Despite producing talents like Abedi Pele, Samuel Etufils, Drogba, Raba Majer, and Okocha, no African team has ever reached the semi-finals of the World Cup. The highest performing teams were Cameroon in 1990, Senegal in 2002, and Ghana in 2010. In fact, Ghana was just a penalty away for making it to the semi-finals. Why do African powerhouses like Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, Egypt, and Morocco fail to attain excellence at the World Cup? After analyzing videos and following the African presence on the world stage, we pinpoint set pieces as the challenge facing African teams. By set pieces, we are talking about free kicks and corner kicks. The African teams generally find it difficult to defend against free kicks lobbed into the 18-yard box. Many of the African teams at the World Cup put on a magnificent display, but any time their opponents get a free kick or corner kick, they look dangerous. While we usually waste our set pieces, we get punished for it by the opposing teams at the World Cup. Another reason is that our defenders are not able to set the offside trap successfully. In fact, an African team playing defenders at a high line is usually going to pay for it, as the defenders are not able to technically and tactically play their opponents on offside. For instance, when Ghana played Brazil in the second round of the 2006 World Cup, all of the goals scored by Ronaldo Nazario were the result of our defenders trying to play him offside. Ghana paid dearly for those lapses. The third and final reason has to do with the referees. The referees usually have a soft spot for the bigger nations. They are quick to caution an African player but will not do the same for the opponent, thereby putting pressure on the African players. In football now, a second yellow card means you are out of the match. A first yellow card also means that player must tread cautiously, which affects the confidence with which the African teams play the game. So what is the way forward for the African teams in Qatar 2022, and for that matter, any other tournament? Firstly, the African teams must study well how their defenders and players can strategically defend set pieces. The African teams must also put the right player behind the ball when it comes to set pieces. The best set piece taker may not necessarily be the star of the team. Intense training on defending and utilizing set pieces will really see more positive results from the African sides. The African teams also need to understand the theory and practice of offside. If they cannot set it effectively, then there is no need to push your defenders high on the pitch or else they will be embarrassed. Finally, the other factor is beyond the control of the African teams. This has to do with fairness on the part of the referees. This unfairness in major tournaments usually stems from protecting the bigger nations as a progression by these nations with the array of stars helps push the marketing forces to make the organizers earn more money. The appeal to FIFA and their referees is that they should let the game be run according to the fair play policy it seeks to promote. Can the African teams excel at the World Cup if these factors that inhibit them are worked on? What are your thoughts? Share with us in the comments section below.